As far as customization goes on smartphone devices, Samsung's One UI skin is hands down the best software option available. I mean, not only are there stacks of tweaks that you can make within the stock system settings themselves, but they've even got this entirely separate software suite that they call GoodLock, which offers crazy levels of customization that you'd normally think would not be possible on a phone that does not have root access unlocked. And it's one of the reasons why I'm currently using the Galaxy S24 as my main everyday device, as opposed to something like the Pixel 8 Pro, because I just love how much Samsung lets me make this phone my own. And so, given it's been over 18 months since I last made a video on One UI customization, I thought it was as good a time as ever to unpack all of the best customizations offered by One UI. So without further ado, let's get customizing. All right, let's kick things off by looking at some of the cool lock screen customizations that we have available. So if we long press our lock screen here and enter our passcode or pattern, you've got all the usual options that we've had for a while now, including changing the look of the notifications here or customizing the shortcuts down here. But what's really cool is that as of the One UI 6 update, we can now add widgets to our lock screen. You just tap this widgets button here and that'll open up a list of available widgets and we can only select from these first party options from Samsung via this method, but there is a way to add third party widgets, which we'll talk about in a moment. Then if we tap the clock here, we still have a bunch of these clock styles that we can switch between, some of which are new, some of which already existed in previous versions, but a new feature that has just recently been added is the option to add custom clock fonts, which we can do by swiping through this list of fonts here. And then if we tap this three dot icon, we can then download and install third party fonts from the Samsung theme store to make the clock look even more unique. We also now have the option to select from a bunch of different color palettes, which is neat. We can also enable this toggle here to show weather information, which I really like doing. And we can also resize and reposition our clock and widgets, which is super nice. Then if we tap here where it says wallpapers and let's say I come into my gallery here and select a recent photo, we now have two new options down the bottom here. The first is this frame option, which allows me to place my selected image into any of these shapes. And what I love about this option is that when you drag to resize your image, the subject inside the photo will actually expand and pop out of the frame, which looks really cool. We can also adjust the color of the main background here and erase the background of the selected image too, if we like. And so as you can see, with just the tap of a few buttons, we can come up with a really cool yet still personal looking style for our lock screen that doesn't make it impossible to read the clock or notifications and so forth. If we come back though and turn that option off, this second effect option is really neat as well. Much like what we've seen on iOS for a few years now, we can simply swipe through a bunch of these preset options, each of which will make our selected images look just that little bit more unique. Now, as far as customizations straight out of the box, those are the best options available. However, if you have the GoodLock module installed, then there's also three really neat modules that allow for even more lock screen customization. So this Wonderland module allows you to not only set animated wallpapers as your phone's backdrop, but you can even create your own animated wallpapers if you like. And you can also customize the animation that your phone plays when you turn your phone's display on or off. Then we've got this module called Lockstar, which basically lets you customize almost anything related to the layout of your lock screen. So I can move the position of my notifications or the music play widget, for example. I can also change this shortcuts option down here to an expandable menu, which then allows for up to six shortcuts. And then if I just tap on any blank area of the lock screen, I'll get an option to add stickers, which I can then tap to edit however I like. And then as mentioned earlier, this menu is also what unlocks the option to add third party widgets. Seriously, I can add any widget that I like to my lock screen using this module, which is pretty dang cool. And then the last module worth mentioning is this clock face one, which as the name implies, lets you edit the lock screen clock style pretty much as much as you like, way more than what the default lock screen options allow for. And if none of the presets suit your fancy, then you can always come into this my clock option and then tap on create new to create your own style completely from scratch. Now, as for me, I'm a pretty simple guy. I like keeping my lock screen very clean and minimal like this, but it's when we unlock the phone and get into the home screen customizations that I get the most excited. And no joke, the home screen customizations alone are why I currently use this phone over the Pixel 8 Pro right now. So welcome to the One UI launcher, the best stock launcher when it comes to customization for one main reason, wider grid sizing flexibility. 
So by default, pretty much every single phone, Samsung phones included, they all have a default horizontal grid size option of four or five, meaning we can have either four or five app icons horizontally like so. And that's fine if you're not into customization, but if you wanna create setups like this or like this or even like this, then a horizontal grid size of four or five ain't really gonna cut it. And so with One UI, if you download the Home Up Good Lock module, then open it and tap on this home screen option, you can tap here and increase the grid size to up to seven by seven, which is just enough to create my favorite home screen setup of all time. And if you're wondering how I got these cute custom icons set up, well, that's by using the theme park module. You just tap here where it says icon, then tap on create new. And then from there, you tap where it says icon pack and select your chosen icon pack. And for me, I always use my very own drops icon pack on any phone that I'm using. So I'll select that. And what's great about this icon pack in particular is that it has a super neat masking system implemented, which means any unthemed icons get made small as well so that they don't stick out like a sore thumb. But just to double check that every icon has been customized properly, I always tap this three dot icon here, then tap change icons. And by default, any unthemed icons will live right at the bottom of this list. So we'll scroll all the way down. And as you can see, everything is in order. But if you'd like to change any of these icons yourself, you can just tap on an app icon. So I'm gonna select the Beeper app here as an example. Then we can select the icon pack. Then we need to find the icon that we wanna change it to. So I'm gonna search for and select this orangey looking messages icon. And there we go. Now we can just come back, then tap this download icon, give it a name. So I'm gonna name this one drops, then tap okay. Then we just need to tap our newly created icon pack theme, hit apply, and that's it. Every icon will be themed beautifully, which is so, so great. Then if you're looking for a really quick way to make your home screen look 50 times cleaner, then a super easy way to do so is to disable any app labels. Now, on previous versions of One UI, there was no way to disable just the app labels on the home screen without also disabling them in the app drawer, which I don't know about you, but whilst I can easily remember what the apps on my home screen are without the need of labels, I can't say the same about the hundreds of apps in my app drawer. So I used to have to resort to using third-party widget apps to create app icons without the label for the home screen. But with the One UI 6 update, we got this new option all the way down the bottom of the home screen page within the Home Up module called App Icon Setting. If I tap that, then tap to turn it on, we can now independently show or hide the app labels on either our home screen or app drawer separately, which is so, so great. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable the toggle for my home screen. And with that done, I mean, how much cleaner does that look? This Home Up module also has some other cool tweaks, including the option to change the style and design of the Recents UI entirely, which is kind of bonkers that we can do this without sacrificing fluidity. And I actually have mine set to this stack mode. Then I also enable this center the currently running app option and disable these three options for a much, much cleaner look. Here's a quick preview of what that looks like. And then one other setting that I always encourage users to consider if they're looking to clean up their home screen experience is this option under the home screen settings page that lets you hide apps. Now, any apps selected on this list aren't uninstalled or anything, they're just hidden from your phone's app drawer, which just helps to declutter it nicely. I always hide Samsung's calculator, clock, and messages applications, for example, because I usually use Google's versions instead. And so being able to hide them here really helps to, as mentioned, declutter my app drawer and keep things neat and organized. Now, we can't talk about customizing the home screen without discussing custom widgets. So if you long press your home screen and tap on widgets, you'll see this long list of widgets that you can add to your home screen and you can obviously add whichever ones that you like. But if I could recommend just one widget app, it would of course be the KWGT app. I've spoken about this app many, many times on the channel now, but that's because it essentially allows you to create custom widgets from the ground up, which just unlocks so much customization flexibility. But what's even cooler is that much like third-party icon packs that you can download from the Google Play Store, there are also third-party widget packs, literally hundreds of them available right on the Google Play Store itself. And we can just download any that we like the look of and use them to set up some super amazing home screen setups literally within seconds. For example, check out this amazing setup found within my home screen setup application called Palette. And this one's called Light Pneumorphism by a brilliant creator who goes by the name Zephy Setups. 
Now, originally, this was created using Nova Launcher, but I find that third-party launchers still don't work as smoothly with gestural navigation as I like, so we can actually recreate most of this setup using the One UI launcher itself. We just need to tap here to download the wallpaper, then install this third-party widget app called Cloudy KWGT. And then when we come back home, I'm just gonna long press my home screen, tap on widgets, then search for KWGT. And then I'm just gonna add a two by two widget down the bottom here, which I'm then gonna resize like this. Then I'm gonna long press again, tap on widgets, search for KWGT, then add another two by two widget, and again, resize it like so. Then finally, I'll long press one more time, tap on widgets again, search for KWGT, add another two by two widget, and again, resize it accordingly. Now I'm gonna set that wallpaper that we just downloaded. So I'll long press my home screen again and tap on wallpaper and style, then tap on change wallpapers, then select gallery, then download, and then I'll select this white wallpaper, hit done, then next, then hit done again. Then I'm gonna come back home and I'm now gonna to tap to open this top KWGT widget. And from here, I'll search for the number 94, then select this option from the Cloudy KWGT pack. With that loaded in, I'll come over to the layer tab and scale this up just until it's about touching the edges like this, then I'll hit save. Then I'll come back home, tap to open this second widget here, then I'll search for the number 95. Then again, select the option from the Cloudy KWGT pack. And again, I'm just gonna come over to this layer tab and scale this up like so. Then I'll save that and come back home. And then I'll finally select this bottom widget and this time search for the number 82. Again, I'll select the option from the Cloudy KWGT pack. Then I'll come over to the layer tab one more time and scale it up like so. Then I can hit save, come back home, and how good does that look? And some of these widgets even have shortcuts set up automatically. And because we've set this up using the stock One UI launcher, the animations are actually really smooth when opening and closing them. And if you wanna set up any of the other elements to open up shortcuts as well, you can just open up a widget like so. Then for this example, I wanna make it so that tapping on this weather element here launches into my weather app of choice. So I'll just tap to open this stack group, then open this bottom stack group. And now I can come over to the touch tab, then tap the plus icon, then tap where it says none, and then none again, and set this to launch app. Now I can tap this blank option here and scroll down to find my app of choice, which for this example, I'm gonna select this option called Frog Weather, which is basically just a shortcut to the Google Weather app. And with that selected, I can now hit save and come back home. And now when I tap that weather icon, it opens up the weather app. And again, you could do that same process to all of these elements and have a really dynamic home screen that not only looks incredible, but that is also really functional too. Now, the one downside to the One UI launcher is that we can't currently hide or disable the dock. So we can't add this bottom row of apps like the original setup had, but you could easily swap out any of these top widgets for that app widget if you prefer. And look, I do also wish that there was an option perhaps in the Home Up module to hide this little page indicator at the bottom here, which would clean things up even further. But the fact that we're able to get this close with the stock launcher and the fact that it retains this level of fluidity as a result is serious amazing. All right, aside from that, one other feature that I really love about the One UI home screen is what are called widget stacks. This feature has been around for a while now with One UI 6 and it essentially allows you to save some space on your home screen by having multiple widgets stacked together that you can then scroll through as you like. And it's a feature that was pretty much ripped completely from iOS, but it's a seriously cool feature. And to this day, no other Android manufacturer has implemented it like Samsung has. If you've already got a widget on your home screen, then to turn it into a widget stack, you just long press it, then tap create stack. You can then add as many widgets as you like. So let's say I'll add this modes and routines widget. And there we go. I can now have my usual super clean looking single page home screen setup, but then with just a single swipe, I can access a bunch of these automations that I've set up. Okay, from there, we're gonna move into some wider OS customizations, starting with hiding the navigation bar. This used to be an option available to Samsung phones within the display settings by default, but for some reason, it was removed with the One UI 6.1 update, but there is a way to bring the setting back. Within the GoodLock app, we just need to download and install this Navstar module, and then with that open, you'll see this option that says enable extra gesture settings. 
We just need to toggle that on. And now when we come into our settings menu, then into the display section, if we then come down to this navigation bar option and tap here where it says more options, you'll see that we now have this gesture hint option back and we can simply toggle that off to hide that navigation bar down the bottom. And don't worry, that doesn't stop the circle to search functionality from working. You just hold where the navigation bar used to be and there you go. And speaking of the settings app, this has actually long been one of my frustrations with Samsung software is that the settings menu is a bit of a mess and not very intuitive in terms of how it's been laid out. Well, with the Registar module, we can customize that as well. You just open it up, tap on this top option here, then tap here. And now you can not only reorder every single option as much as you like, but you can even completely hide any option too. Like I never use this themes option here, so I can disable that. And I have no clue why Samsung places this apps option so low by default. So I'm gonna move that up closer towards the top and boom, there we go. Now, one of the minor UI redesigns that shipped with One UI 6 was this expanded volume panels menu here, but the main volume slider itself still looks very similar to past versions, but thankfully, using this sound assistant module, we can customize that as well. There's actually a whole heap of volume and EQ based tweaks that we can make down here, but for me, I'm mainly interested in this option here called Flex Volume UI. With this enabled, you'll see that both our primary volume slider and the expanded volume slider panel here, they get these incredibly unique looking lighting effects added. And we can of course play around with these tweaks down here to give the effect a slightly different look. And perhaps my favorite option is this one down here, which transforms that volume slider into a volume knob, which looks seriously cool. All right, to wrap things up, whilst there are so, so many other tweaks and customizations available, particularly within the Goodlock module itself, I thought I'd just very briefly list off what I consider to be the most noteworthy options. And most of these have been around for a while, but just in case you don't know about them or you don't know where to find them, hopefully this will help you out. So we have the very popular Keys Cafe module found within the Goodlock app. And this is what lets you create those really slick animated keyboard themes that you see in a ton of these Samsung customization related videos. Then you have the Quickstar module, which is a really nifty tool that lets you customize your Samsung phone's status bar and quick settings panel, not only by hiding any icons that you like on the status bar or repositioning various elements too, but you can also adjust the spacing of your actual quick settings panel to either increase or decrease the amount of icons shown at one time. There's also the camera assistant module, which I actually usually recommend avoiding unless you really know what you're doing. However, I definitely recommend enabling this 2X crop zoom shortcut toggle, which enables the very useful 2X cropped mode within the camera app itself. I literally have no clue why this isn't enabled by default. There's also this fairly new option with One UI 6.1 where we can customize the alarm background within the stock Samsung clock app, which could come in really handy to visually differentiate between different alarms throughout the day. Back in the Good Lock app though, and I always recommend having a play around with the various settings on offer within this one hand operation module, which is an incredibly powerful tool that lets you add additional shortcuts to the system side swipe gesture. And then last but not least, we have this Routines Plus module, which allows you to automate almost any action you like, such as turning on your Wi-Fi when you arrive at your house or opening a predetermined website when you unlock your phone with a specific fingerprint, or even just running a particular macro that you've set up. And like I said, there are a bunch of other options available throughout the entire software experience. And I'll link to a couple of videos that I've made in the past that unpack some of my favorites. But there you go, that is your ultimate guide to One UI customization. If you've got any other great One UI tweaks that you love using and that you think others should know about, then definitely feel free to share them down in the comments below. But aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.